Welcome. In this video, we'll introduce you to our virtual graffiti app, Sprayscape, and the team of developers behind it. My name is Shane Moore. I'm a computer information systems major at USC, and I led the map, device location, and spray likes portion of the project, among helping where needed. Hey, Shane here. I'm going to explain the goal and the use and the purpose of our app of Sprayscape. First of all, without this app, people are forced to unlawfully vandalize another's property with foul smelling paints that culminate in an often beautiful graphic design. We live in a restrictive world where someone can't put art anywhere they, they please. Our app fills this niche. The goals of our app. I mean, Sprayscape was developed to provide a safe and illegal platform for people to express themselves in a world where creative outlets are often lacking. The team behind Sprayscape aimed to address this frustration by offering users worldwide an opportunity to showcase their inner selves without the concerns of vandalism. What a nasty word. For use cases, I'm going to bring up some of our personas. This is what we were heavily building our, our app off of and to tailor to. This is Hugh Mann. Hugh just moved in to New York City. He's trying to get to know the neighborhood in his off hours without committing to a group yet. He's trying to vibe. He's trying to learn. He's trying to make friends. Our app can help him. Samantha Hobbs. She is a single mother who just wants to share a hobby with her son that can get them both active and outside. Sprayscape can allow them to help them be active. It can take them on exploration and journeys and quests to find more drawings and to make more drawings. Connor Brown. He's a, for lack of a better term, vandalizer that has been kind of bored as of late and is looking for something to spice up his mornings before work. This would serve as a creative and constructive outlet for this young man. And lastly, Jim Bo. Jim Bo is an artist that wants to use the app to develop and distribute his personal brand to sell his artwork it's for business purposes. He can sign his name at the bottom of sprays and get his name out there. Hey, Shane here. Various technologies were utilized in the creation of Sprayscape. These include software, libraries, and hardware. Libraries that we used include the Android APK libraries for the App Foundation. We used Google Maps libraries for our main map menu. We used Firebase for the, our database implementation that stores all of our data. Android graphics for the drawing activity, as well as some smaller libraries like java.util.math, for instance, to compare distances. Here is an example of one such table that our database uses. Some non-library software includes Java, XML, and JavaScript. These are languages that we programmed in, as well as Android Studios, the editor and compiler that we used. Hardware that we used includes the phone camera for taking pictures to draw on, azimuth sensors to align the user's phone camera angle, cellular towers so that we can use the GPS services to get a device location, among other basic Android phone hardware such as CPU, RAM, and storage. Hey, Shane here. Let's say you click a spray and you decide that you really don't like it. Well, you can easily prevent the author of the spray from ever appearing on your map again. Let's say that someone has made a graffiti that goes against our terms of conduct. 
Well, in this case, you can easily navigate to the report button, and this will make us aware of the infraction. Then you will be prompted on whether you want to block the graffiti's author as well. Finally, if you decide that you no longer want a user blacklisted, you can easily empty your list in the profile with the tap of a button. Hi, my name is Dominic Ruggiero. I'm a computer science major, and I focused on the back end of our project where I implemented Firebase all throughout the project, helping connect it to the various parts of our project. And I also focused on the drawing part of the project as well. This is the back end we're using, Firebase. We use authentication to log in and register users, but I'm not gonna show that page because it contains sensitive information. Here we have all our sprays and its corresponding information. And then we have all our users and their corresponding information, as well as another collection that the user has containing their sprays and all the sprays information. Notice each user and spray is represented by a unique ID. I'm gonna be showing you the login and register portion of the project. So let's go ahead and fill out our email, password as password and username. We're gonna go ahead and register, but we need to verify that email. So we go ahead and pull up our email and we'll see that we get a link from Firebase saying that if you click on it, you'll be verified. So we'll navigate to the login page. This is the back end we're where using Firebase. We will go Firebase. ahead and type we in our email and put the password in. Login and registry we will be able to users. Log we're not going to show that page because it contains sensitive Without the verification, you will not be Here able to log in. Here we have all our sprays and it's so let's say we forgot our password. And then we we're have go ahead and type in our email and their and go ahead and information get password as this well is going to send us another collection another link that the user has where it'll give us the option to and reset our password. So we're going to notice head each and click user that link and spray is represented we're by change the password ID. to abc123 and if we go back to our project you'll see that i type in abc123 and it'll go ahead and log us into our account hello my name is Renato Martin Amadeo Gonzalez Tapia, better off known as Ren. I was in charge of the hardware aspect of this project. I worked on the camera, the azimuth, the back end Firebase storage section, and general bug fixing. Hello, Ren here. What you're seeing now is footage of when I was running down Summit Street earlier today. This is to demonstrate the map and how the user moves in real space. We can next create the Create Spray button. This pulls up the camera service, and we can identify a wall. After taking a picture, we are prompted to confirm or deny it, at which point we are able to draw to our heart's content. We'll add a little smiley face and the word hi. Wonderful. Next, we'll save that so that way we can see it on the map later. A few moments later. Our spray's been uploaded and the map updated. We can click on it again, follow the azimuth, and pull up the previous spray. We can leave a like, go to review, add a comment. Nice. Post that comment and return to the map. We can see that the node has changed color now that we've interacted with it. Hello, my name is Khalil Johnson, and I'm a computer information systems major at USC Columbia. Over the development cycle of the Sprayscape app, I was mostly involved in the development of the user interface, and I also headed the development of the comment section. And here we are on the map screen. <clears throat> this is the screen that's going to allow you to walk around and examine these different pens, which each represent a different um, work of graffiti. So I'm going to click on this one right here so I can demonstrate the comment function. There we go. Very beautiful work of art. Um, the artist is clearly just gifted in this field. I'm so moved by it that we're going to come down here and tap on the review button so that we can like it and leave a comment.
We're going to type in great work. And then we're going to tap the post comment button. And there we go. That's how you leave a comment on our graffiti. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jaden Arnold. Uh, I am a computer information systems major. And over the course of the Sprayscape development, I made the profile, the settings, and worked on the reporting and block features. I'm going to be showcasing the profile and the settings portion of the app. So let's go to the profile. And we can see that I have liked zero graffitis and I found one graffiti. So if we go back, and let's say I look at this graffiti. I can't access that graffiti because it's too far away. So let's go to this one instead. So I think this is cool graffiti. I'm going to give it a like. So if we go back and go to profile, we can see that I have found an additional graffiti and I have liked it. And as well, we have our settings page where we can go and disable different things and those settings will continue to persist.